Hi, hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Liam Mitchell and I'm currently a graduate student at MSU. In this video, I will be sharing a small survey over the topic of mobile cyber physical systems, mainly discussing concepts, applications, challenges, and solutions. Feel free to pause the video at any point in this presentation. Before you is a brief overview with some relevant background information before we get into mobile cyber physical systems. A cyber physical system is a computer system in which a mechanism is controlled or monitored by computer based algorithms. It combines the physical world with cyber components. A simple example of a cyber physical system or CPS model in which we use in our everyday lives is the traffic light system at intersections. The figure on the right, which looks like a flowchart, is called an FSM, a finite state machine, model. It helps show the input, output, and transition flow between the states, which are the lights changing. The FSM is what we typically use to model CPS. Traditional cyber physical systems are large engineered systems developed for automation in specific areas. They can be very powerful and efficient so long as the input to the environment stays determinate, the collected data and output should stay determinate. Mobile CPS systems can precisely collect a wide variation of data across an array of dynamic nodes. These systems can generate unique results because of their sensor's ability to move freely throughout their environment. Contrary to some people's beliefs, mobile CPS is not a subset of CPS there are some major differences between them in the art of having unique characteristics to provide application domains in which traditional CPS cannot. A quick overview of a concept map for cyber physical systems shows just how complex and challenging certain models of this system can become. This will be used again later. The trade-offs between traditional and mobile differ. Some of the key differences are in the table shown. Traditional CPS is static in the fact that its system is stuck in one area or bound to many different areas throughout a system's environment. It can process complex problems or large amounts of data because it is connected to a constant energy source, such as a power grid. However, it lacks the data resource aspects of pervasive, seamless, and ubiquitous input. Mobile CPS is dynamic. Its system is unbounded and free to move to any positional point so long as the wireless connections remain stable, secure, and reliable with the rest of the system. The three areas or industries that we'll discuss for the remainder of the PowerPoint are listed in order of their applications. The main one we will focus on will be number one, with the other two being here to help drive mobile cyber physical system concepts. The first being vehicular ad hoc networks called vanets, cars that communicate with other vehicles and their surrounding infrastructure and people. The second, healthcare systems, such as emergency response and preventative measures. And lastly, mobile education or e-learning. The number of applications is endless. With such interesting buzz over the recent announcement of Facebook's metaverse, we do not have enough time to discuss all of them. However, we will see some elements of AR, but it will not use their brand. Vehicular Ad Hoc Networks Vanets is a subcategory that was created by applying the principles of mobile ad hoc networks and vanets. You may have heard of this referred to as the less specific term called Internet of Vehicles. Vanets are the spontaneous creation of a wireless network of mobile devices to the domain of vehicles. These networks can be formed to allow information to be relayed among cars and have existed since 2001. They are a key part of the Intelligent Transportation System framework. The table shown in this slide notes the differences between Vanet's aspects of applications for both traditional and mobile CPS. Traditional CPS is not dynamic, although able to utilize V2I communication, they cannot communicate past that point their definition itself is static. Not only is this true, but traditional CPS systems do not employ various forms of mobile communication methods. Contrarily, vanets in mobile CPS are dynamic in many ways. 
The word dynamic has several definitions. In physics, it is essentially the study of an object's motion and its surroundings. An example of this would be a vehicle moving on the highway. In computer terminology, it's usually defined as the means capable of action and or change. An example would be a device's IP address or radio frequency bands. In software, a dynamic programming language is one in which operations otherwise done at compile time can be done at runtime. An example is optimization over recursion. If something is repeatedly requesting data for the same results, instead of recomputing the same complex problem, we can satisfy the calls by storing the results of the smaller subproblems, equations, to save time and avoid complexities which could arise in a time-sensitive system. They have various forms of mobile communication. If one of its primary forms, such as V2I, fail on a vehicle, there are numerous other ways the information can be relayed or forwarded between other surrounding vehicles and devices. Some examples of applications for ad hoc networks are road transportation and emergency services, on the road services, traffic information, platooning with other vehicles. If you see over here in the right bottom corner, it is when cars can autonomously follow each other inches apart on the highway. It allows for aerodynamics using each other's slipstream, which can save miles per gallon and reduce traffic for other lanes. And lastly, intercar communication, which could be like a voice proximity chat for vehicles on the road. What was once an emerging field three years ago is currently here. Before COVID-19 had exponentially advanced e-learning, a study conducted in 2018 analyzed the influence of college students' belief on the adaptation of mobile devices for coursework based on the theory of planned behavior. The results provide future directions for researchers and systems engineers to design mobile education systems, MES, that could improve students' consent on mobile learning. E-learning is not suitable for children under the age of six because at such an early age, it is hard for them to concentrate on systematic courses and interact with instructors through the web. The sensing capabilities of mobile education systems are the benefit of seamlessly sensing the data of when your child is interacting with the physical world, such as recognizing objects around them. Analyzing this data shows you can perceive children's emotions and learning statuses. An example of mobile e-learning would be through the usage of augmented reality headset devices. This is where you can seamlessly integrate visual interfaces and information from the cyber world pervasively with the physical world. Previously, in an earlier slide, I shared some boiled down trade-offs. The diagram shown now is a much better researched representation of the differences with the addition of their overlap from independence. Notice both systems share some of the main core concerns when discussed outside of contrast. This dependent relationship also creates the idea that traditional CPS can be evolved using mobile CPS to create a traditional mobile hybrid which in some cases can improve certain qualities of each other. This diagram is a brief overview of the challenges, solutions, and applications that mobile CPS systems have. Each of these will be covered in the next slides. Putting the security key challenge first is of the utmost importance for cyber physical systems depending on the aspect of its functional safety class. A fun fact about the market is, in 2019, the industry's net worth was about under $150 billion. It is projected to grow to about $400 billion by 2026. Part of the security sector's job is to deal with multiple types of threats or attacks, while also accounting for data misbehavior. It is a continuous process anytime a new threat or attack emerges. Again, here is the full concept map for cyber physical systems. This is a reduced map for just cybersecurity and its R&D test buddy, which entails validation. The amount of security for these systems is incredible. 
The process of making cyber-physical systems, let alone mobile cyber-physical systems, is not simple by any means. The process of encrypting a message from plain text involves both devices needing to know the secret key, as well as Mac generation and other various algorithms and checksums, etc., before the plain text message contents can be decrypted by the second party. In this example, Alice is attempting to send a secure message to Bob. Anytime we use wireless communication, the encrypted data packets being sent as radio waves through the air are known as the ciphertext. If, say, a hacker by the name of Eve was nearby with the hardware to sniff these packets, then she would be able to see the ciphertext. Luckily, she would not be able to understand the message's cryptic contents. Hypothetically, let's say Eve is Bob's wife, and she's suspicious that Bob is having an affair with Alice because he has a history of it. Under certain circumstances, even if Eve had the background knowledge and knew of the encryption methods used, she would still be unable to see the contents without the key. <laughs> now, change scenarios. You are a very wealthy business person and are sitting passenger in an autonomous vehicle platooning behind others on the highway, when all of a sudden, your car decides to turn left immediately into the median. You survive the crash without a scratch on you. After investigation of the vehicle's black box message recorder, it is revealed that someone was able to brute force past your vehicle's security and inject false angle messages to your vehicle's steering system. These are some of the numerous ways of why privacy and security are a key focus for these systems. The second challenge involves a mobile dynamic environment. In certain areas of high traffic density or full frequency bands from other people constantly trying different cells, it creates the issue of interference for mobile systems. You've experienced this if you've ever gone to a Tigers baseball game. Opportunistic networking involves networks that exploit the human social characteristics such as similarities, daily routines, mobility patterns, and interests to perform the message routing and data sharing. It plays a significant role in mobile CPS as it provides opportunities to connect highly mobile components. There are three aspects of research dealing with the mobility in opportunistic networking. They are mobility models, routing, and data transmission. System stability as a challenge. The crash of an operating system and the exhaustion of battery may cause unreliability, resulting in obstruction of prevalent use of crowd-sensing applications. For example, in a crowdsourcing task scenario, a sudden collapse of a mobile phone acting as participating node due to a service failure of the system may lead to the delay or even impede that task to successfully complete. Large amounts of data being transmitted also tends to cause system crashes more often. And lastly, the delay from the execution time itself can cause the system to become unstable. In traditional CPS, most systems are stationary, so they come attached with a continuous power supply. In mobile CPS, the power source must be portable, so it is typically from a small but proportionate reserve, like a battery or gas tank. Once these have run out of energy, these cyber components cannot work Thus, the mobile CPS is unable to operate. Executing complex calculations or requests and having poor architecture design and code can all cause bottlenecks, making you spend much more energy. If cold, the environment can reduce battery's capacity by a drastic amount. If too hot, it could reduce the performance or potentially face failure. This brings us to the solutions section. For security, a detect and prevent model was developed to help guide cybersecurity programmers in creating fixes for new types of emerging threats. This is a continuous job, which is why many of our secure electronic products need updates if potential flaws are discovered. It also thwarts any long-term efforts towards cracking the encryption. Data integrity can be authenticated after decryption by comparing to additional checksums such as CRC, cyclic redundancy check. This can catch errors and determine if data is misbehaving. It can be considered dynamic validation. And lastly, trustworthiness. 
After all is said and done, there is a reason why the industry has safe safety classifications along with government regulations. We are currently at level 2 autonomous vehicles, unlike level 5 which Elon Musk claims Tesla is at. The list of solutions for mobile dynamic environments consists of a replication mechanism that was adopted to help solve the problem of the uncertainty of perspective connectivity while utility-based forwarding techniques are used to handle human, nodes mobility, and resources heterogeneity in routing protocols. Opportunistic networking, while technically a solution, it is considered a challenge dependent on many different factors surrounding your life. These factors and strategies range from popularity-based, social behavior-based, publish-slash-subscribe-based, global optimality, heterogeneous technologies-based, and lastly, peer-to-peer -peer strategies that are described and summarized to cope with how to disseminate data in opportunistic networks. Self-adaptive software systems can modify their runtime behavior with the help of scalable data distribution layer. A communication middleware that gives a communication framework to annex actuators, sensors, and other mobile devices. The last solution is SA Frame. It is an agent-based multi-layer framework with context-aware semantic service, CSS, to support the development and deployment of context-aware applications for vehicle networks. System stability solutions consist of crowd sensing, which is a technique where a large group of individuals having mobile devices capable of sensing and computing collectively shared data and extract information to measure, map, analyze, estimate, or infer any processes of common interest. Service state synchronization mechanism is a business process execution language and petri nets that analyze and deal with possible service failures and to automatically restore to normal statuses and therefore it can improve the stability. Flywheel proxy service is an HTTP proxy integrated into Google Chrome. It encompasses the data size of proxied web pages and is fault tolerant through mitigating fetch errors through trial and error. Interdependency among service workflows and fault tolerance. This interdependency solution reduces the amount of execution time it takes for multiple workflows, thus increasing stability. Our last solution and conclusion is on the slide of energy. Embedded systems can help reduce overall power requirements and manufacturing costs so long as you follow an operation of order. Choose the correct microprocessor for your design. Reduce the PCB hardware to nearly bare and only necessary. And lastly, reduce bottlenecks for your design by using assembly or compiler programming techniques that adhere to your design. Research surveys on the energy efficiency solutions for mobile handsets and literature from 1999 to May 2011 were categorized into six groups. Energy aware operating systems, energy measurements, power models, users interactions and computing resources, wireless interfaces and protocol optimizations, sensors optimizations and computing offloading. Sometimes the environment can have an impact on a mobile device's battery. Depending on the temperature, you may need to insulate it if it's too cold, or figure a way to cool it with a fan and heat sink, etc. Some of the services and sensors created consist of adaptive sampling and hierarchically powering on sensors are two prevalent methods of sensor optimizations. And examples of them are sociable sense and energy efficient mobile sensing system, EEMSS. Activity sensitive approach named adaptive accelerometer based activity recognition, A3R, which can reduce energy consumption of accelerometer based continuous mobile sensing. And lastly, mobile cloud computing systems can be used to save energy by providing fine-grained offload code to the infrastructure to partition programs. Here are my relevant sources that I used to make this presentation. And if you have any questions or want to discuss anything further, feel free to email me. My email is listed here.